In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the tool library from inside of Bobcad Cam. Now you can get to the tool library right up here under the Cam tab and right here where it says Tool Library. Now if we click on the tool library, it's going to load up the entire tool library. So this is every tool we have stored in the system. And it's specifically set up this way because we have not defined a job. So Bobcad's not going to kick out turning tools because we never defined whether we were just doing a turn job or a mill job or what have you. So the first thing we'll see is we have drills. We have mills, which is going to be different end mills, roughers, chamfer mills, corner rounds, thread mills, V tools, all the different milling tool types that we can create. We have our lathe tools right here. We have our probe or under generic it's just the probing tools right here and then we have laser plasma and water jet so as an example let's go to mill and then i'm going to go to the end mill rough category now first you'll see the tool number now these tool numbers are irrelevant because they're not set up for your machine it's just kind of the order that they were added into the system at some point in so we have all of our tool numbers we also have a tool label we have the diameter we have the corner radius let me move over. We have the number of flutes, the total flute length on all those tools, the overall length, and then the tool material. One thing that you can do is you can, if you want to sort by a diameter, you can click on the word diameter and sort all your tools by either smallest to largest, or if I click on it again, I can go from largest to smallest. I could even go in and sort by the diameter by grabbing it and dragging it up to this column header right here. And it's going to show me all the different tool types. So if I open up my quarter inch here, I'll see that I have a standard and a long version of my quarter inch tool. And we could actually get rid of that and bring back the normal tools just by clicking the little X. Now, one of the biggest changes we have to make to tools is the tool material. In my case, I want to go down and find my 5 eighths long. And all I'm going to do is double click on it. Now, when I double click on it, it opens up the tool parameters, which you could also see is right here. We have the tool label, we have the diameter, the flute length, the corner radius, the number of flutes, the overall length, the protrusion length, or how much of the tool is actually sticking out, the tool number, and right below that we have the material. And a lot of times I'm not using high speed steel end mills, so I could switch that to carbide or insert, or I could even do custom, and custom is just an option right now because I haven't actually selected my material. It's actually the material itself that has the feeds and speeds for carbide, high speed steel, and insert. So if you add a new tool material to your materials, then you would also have a custom or a different name here as well. So I could set that to carbide. Right down here, we have our tool holder. And the tool holder allows us to assign a tool holder. So this would be the holder that's being used when we're using this tool. And by default, we have a CAT40, CAT50, or BT40 holders. Now over here on the right, we then have all the arbors for that. So for my 5 ace tool, I could go pick my 5 ace ID arbor. And I'm actually just going to double click on it because this is going to open up the arbor definition page. So first we give the arbor a name. And then we build it using these elements. And there's only two elements that you can use to build, cylinders and cones. We're not creating an entire solid of this arbor right now. All we really need is the kind of generic profile, as if you were looking at the arbor from a front view. So we can see that we built it with a cylinder, which is a height of 0.667, and a diameter of 1.75. And then we go to a cone, which has three settings for it. So we have the height of it, we have the top diameter here, and the bottom diameter down here. So we'll see this actually tapers down to one and a half inches. From there, we then have another cylinder and another cone. So you just build it out. Shouldn't be too long to create these. It's a pretty quick process. We really only use this information for collision checking. So if you don't add a holder, it's not the end of the world. But I'll go ahead and hit OK. And I'll pick that 5 ace holder and hit OK. And now anytime I pick this tool, it's going to show up with this Cat 40 5 ace arbor on it. Down below that, we have Use System Feeds and Speeds. Now, if we leave this checked, we're letting Bobcad create the feeds and speeds 
based on the material, based on the tool material, and it's going to calculate for us. If we were to uncheck this, we can go in and tell it what spindle direction we always want to use, and then what the spindle RPM is, the plunge feed rate, and the cutting feed rate. And what this is going to do is any time I pick this tool, regardless of the material that's chosen, whether it's wood or aluminum or plastic, it's going to come in with whatever feeds and speeds I enter here. So I'm gonna leave that checked so that Bobcad can figure it out and it'll change it based on the materials that I choose. And then finally, we have a section for custom geometry, which allows us to assign custom tool geometry. Essentially in the CAD window here, we would draw out the shape of the tool. If we were doing say a form tool, we would draw it out and then actually select that and let Bobcad revolve it into a proper tool. Now that's all about modifying a tool which is essentially the same as creating a new tool. Now, the way we create a new tool is I'm just gonna sort by my tool number here. And then down at the bottom, if I click this little green plus sign, it's going to add a tool all the way at the bottom of the list. And it's a blank half inch tool. It doesn't even have a title on it. So we can double click on it from there. And then we would go in and set up all the same settings we just looked at through the 5 ace tool. So we'd give it a label, we would define the whole tool, define the tool material, holder if we want to, all that. And then when we're all done, we can shrink that over and that will actually save that tool. And you'll see it even gave it a name, even though I didn't name it. Now to get rid of tools, all we do is click on the tool and hit this little delete symbol here and then say yes. Now down at the bottom, we have save and we have import. Now save as is gonna save this file out and then import allows us to pull the file back in. So if you're using say version 33, and you want to take the tool crib that you've already created or the tool library that you've already created and bring it in, you're going to want to import it into the tool library. And once again, whenever you're creating your tools, if you go to something like a lollipop cutter and you double click, it will ask for information specific to that tool. The picture is going to show you what you need to define. You're going to define it. And when you're all done, you can hit OK. And that concludes the video on the tool library from inside of Bobcat Cam.